My morning starts out the same way almost every single day. I wake up, wash my face, brush my teeth, and get dressed. I change into another top. That one showed my shoulders. I then decide to change into another. That one showed my midriff. I repeat those steps a couple more times, then end up settling for the good old hoodie. Like all days, I'm not in the mood to be sexually harassed, though that seems to be inevitable no matter what it is that I'm wearing. My earliest memory of being catcalled was the summer going into my seventh grade year. I was walking to the park with my best friend. Two men driving by rolled down their windows and yelled, nice short shorts, girls. I was only 12. After that day, the catcalling and harassment only became more frequent. I had been threatened and pressured into doing things that I had never wanted to do. From these experiences, I learned to cover myself up, carry mace in my hands, and hold my keys in between my knuckles in case I needed to fight back while walking alone. I was taught to keep my earbuds out while walking on vacant streets, yell, fire, not rape, and keep my eyes ahead. He'll eventually leave if I don't respond. Sound familiar, ladies? This issue has not only affected me, but many of my female identifying peers and women all around the world. According to the Washington Post, a survey conducted by Making Caring Common revealed that 87% of its participants have experienced some form of sexual harassment. This includes catcalling, which is the act of making a whistle, shout, or comment of a sexual nature to a woman walking by on the street. Every woman is taught to ignore this behavior. Many victims regret speaking out after their stories have been disbelieved by their own friends and family. A study conducted by UN Women UK, an organization fighting for gender equality, found that 97% of women have experienced some form of sexual harassment. A further 96 of victims have not reported their abuser from the fear that their story would be seen as trivial, leading to them not getting the justice that they deserve. In regards to harassment of underage girls, a minute 14% of students have been taught about sexual harassment. Nearly half of students stated that in the case of being harassed, they would never report the incident, and those who did received negative feedback from their school and peers. From these statistics, it's apparent to see why so many girls, both my age and older, are afraid to speak up about past experiences with sexual harassment and assault. This norm we have of disregarding women's stories is destroying our society. It lets rapists roam free and feels the fear that all women share of becoming the next victim. These norms all stem from one issue, misogyny. From the moment we become conscious, we are constantly being fed these misogynistic outlooks on life all through the media. As a young girl, I loved flipping through my mom's old magazines. But it was only until recently that I began to question the depiction of the women in the advertisements that were crowding the pages. Photos of women's bodies in the shape of soda bottles, sexual jokes next to photos of women eating sandwiches, and portrayals of unrealistic body standards used by alcohol companies to promote their newest hard seltzer. Advertisement is all about influencing human behavior by playing on human emotions, such as pleasure, love, fear, and so on. A study found that 37% of ads are sexual in nature, and women are the modes of representing that sexuality. As sad as it is to say, girls are not immune to being objectified, even at a young age. According to the American Psychological Association, Young girls in the media are portrayed in sexual manners way more often than boys are, through their clothing, bodily postures, and mannerisms. This, this representation encourages harmful gender stereotypes 
that ultimately normalizes violence against young girls. Negative expectations of what girls should look and act like are taught to children through their favorite Nickelodeon and Disney Channel series. In shows such as Jessie and Zoe 101, girls are idolized for their physical beauty and less for their intelligence, their character, and their experiences. This sets a false standard for young girls who look up to and idolize these characters and a negative view of women for young boys. Eventually, we grow up. But we still continue walking through our adulthood with these misogynistic ideals loafing around in the back of our heads. We both consciously and subconsciously teach them to our descendants, and the cycle continues. But this is not just a modern phenomenon. According to John Berger's Ways of Seeing, the objectification of women dates back to some of the earliest artworks. Berger states that a naked body has to be seen as an object in order to become a nude. Nakedness reveals itself. Nudity is placed on display, ultimately meaning that a nude woman is an object of desire. Men look at the representation of the women in these art pieces and their treatment of real life women is influenced by what they've seen. Women understand this and have succumbed to it. Women are observed and they are aware of it. They are submissive to the spectators. Their newness is on display. In most antique art pieces, the observer of the piece is presumed to be a male. In the painting, An Allegory of Venus by Bronzino, the way in which the goddess Venus is seated does not have any correlation with the action that she's involved in, kissing. The goddess is painted in a way so that the spectator can have a reaction. Her femininity is on display. She's an object, an abstraction. The goddess is painted in a way to make the observer feel powerful and manly. Sexual harassment against women is violence against women. And there's no excuse for that violence to exist in our society. The media, including the advertising industry, must be held accountable for their contributions in fueling the blazing fire of misogyny and violence against women. Not only that, but we as a whole must become more savvy media consumers and not reflect our misogynistic mindsets born from the actions of the media onto our children and future generations. A major part of this is teaching consent in homes, schools, and on national level platforms, and reading stereotypes of what women and men alike should look and act like. Incidents of sexual violence must be reported and responded to with seriousness. We need to recognize why it happens and address it, how it happens and address it, and who's responsible for it and address it. Only then can we prevent and protect against it. Thank you.